Hey, hey, y'all, Jeremy James here, the Bourbon Realtor, coming at you on this episode of Barstools and Bourbon, and today we dive into some rice whiskey by JT Mellick. been watching the show for a while you know a couple months ago we came across this interesting bottle of JT Mellick Louisiana whiskey um, and super excited to be able to have not only the barrel proof but also the owner and master distiller and head cook and bottle chef and everything else um, Mike Frugé right that's come right. on in Mike that's right. hey how are you doing Thank excellent to here. good to see you thank, thank you for you. coming up um, awesome. you brought some of your Louisiana weather with you yeah it's um, <laughs> It's getting warm, but if you like if the air conditioner is on outside. What's yeah, going this, on? Yeah, this is uh, well, you know, it's probably ten degrees hotter in Louisiana than it is here. I just, here, but I am, I am not yeah. built for that life. I'm just not. Yeah. Well, Mike, I, um, like I said, a couple a couple months ago, you and I got talking, right. um, got a hold of your um, well, it's it's your standard uh, ninety small batch, not, small batch right. ninety proof um, version. Loved it. Now the story goes, um, I was driving into Wilderness Trail Distillery and um, as I pull up into the parking spot, um, I'm just sitting there working on whatever, shooting a text or doing whatever. Right. And, and I hear this on my window and I yep. turn and I look and there's this long goatee staring at me so I knew it was Pat instantly. And it, I rolled down my window and he goes, just like this, you gotta try this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, yep. and I was like, I'm like, all right. I'm like, tell me about it. And he goes, no, no, no. He says, just try. Yeah. And took a sip, and I was immediately blown away. I mean, I was just like, Absolutely. oh my gosh. Yeah. For me, it tasted. It had a lot of characteristics of of a weeded style bourbon and everything else, and was um, instantly curious as to what was going on in the glass. And then he looks at me and he goes, I, and I asked him. I said, okay. So tell me what's going on. He goes, right. it's rice whiskey. Right. And I was like, yeah. okay, now I'm interested. Um, cause we've all tasted good whiskey, all tasted good bourbon. Um, what we don't see a lot is rice whiskey. Right. So immediately I jumped on it, tried to get, um, one of the bottles ended up getting, um, I think you sent it to me, um, one of the bottles and then, uh, what was it? Batch. Yeah. Batch, uh, 322. 322. Yeah. Yep. Um, and so we did a review on it. I like it. I started going, uh, looking around. Um, for your fan base down there in Louisiana right. and what is it Arcadia Bourbon Society down there uh, shout out to all you guys thank you so much um, got the hookup absolutely got the hookup on the barrel proof absolutely fell in love with it and yeah so then it was just a matter of all right Mike when are you gonna be in town so we can talk yeah and here so, we are We're doing so our... tell us a little bit about your product what you got so uh, you know we we grow rice mm -hmm. and we grow rice uh, and crawfish down in Louisiana uh, my family has been doing that for well over a hundred years. I'm fourth generation. JT Miller, my great great uncle, he was the first guy to grow rice. So, uh, long story short, you know, price of rice fell one year. You know, what else can we do with this stuff? And uh, after I did all my research, you know, I realized there was no such thing as an American rice whiskey. Uh, there's multiple reasons for that, but mostly it has to do with the timing of prohibition and when rice farming was coming up, um, prohibition came along, so it sort of crushed all those family, family owned right. farm distilleries. Anybody who might be. Anybody who yeah. might have tried. So, um, you know, it was a big, big experiment. You mentioned Pat Heiss and uh, a couple of guys, that's why we're back here in uh, Kentucky to kind of uh, make the rounds and learn more, Right. you know, if you will. But at the time, nobody knew it first thing about rice um, and uh, so big experiment big oh, know, risk you yeah know, you whatever. guys took a big and, dive uh, so I just dove right in uh, we, we put down a barrel then we put down a hundred and then we put down you know <laughs> thousands I guess if you will <laughs> uh, and uh, turns out you know we just released it last summer and we, we haven't even been a full year right. yet and uh, now we're doing barrel picks and uh, it's, it's really you can see the momentum starting to okay. take off uh, uh, I think it makes an incredible whiskey you know who knew didn't know right I, I just you know I tell people it's, it's uh, 
I don't want to get too spiritual, but uh, it was like a voice in my head that tells me to keep going. Hey, <laughs> you know, that's all those presidents so, in your wallet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that too, that too. Yeah, it, it gets uh, it's an emotional business. It yeah, goes up and down, you know, good days and bad days. But uh, uh, you know, just to talk about it a little bit, the the nose, you know, that's the main thing everybody yeah. notices. Well, uh, on the label, yeah. you've got a glorious label, yeah, and I know you, you guys went thank through you. a lot of changes and stuff, getting it kind of dialed in. Right. Got a big old mud bug on there. Got to yeah. be about life size too. That's a, that's about <laughs> yeah, right. <pretty> much. <laughs> that's that's a that's a good yeah. eater right there. Yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit about you because you um, obviously you've got that heritage and everything else going on um, with not only rice production but also the crawfish and everything else that you're all got doing down your farm i'm going to go ahead and pour us out this yeah, is batch right. 123 well there you 123, go 123 yeah one of my favorite batches by the way our batches are about uh eight to twelve barrels per batch uh, we blend them all ourselves or i do on the desktop <laughs> there you go i'm not a master blender but uh we, we uh huh? cheers, cheers. Yeah. Yep. Still smells good, thank goodness. <sighs> yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Good. Because nose. I do too. Is, but <laughs> yeah, but you're biased. I mean you've got the t shirt. You gotta love yeah, it, right? Yeah, yeah. The nose on this, it's for a four year old. When we typically talk four-year-old whiskeys, four-year-old right. bourbons, mm -hmm. we, um, I typically look for a really grain-forward whiskey, either really heavy corn or rye or barley notes right up front, um, and you can, and typically you can taste that young age. Yeah, you can't taste four years in this at all. It's right. not that si that same type of grain-forward. Mm -hmm. For me, because I've been wrestling with these things for, for a little bit now and just really doing a little thinking about it and not nearly as much as you have, obviously. Yeah. But I think what I've kind of settled on is that the rice has such a lower flavor profile mm -hmm. that the barrel notes come through earlier and they don't have as much to overpower as far as that, the yeah. grains and everything else. And so the, the rice gets, I, I use the language, the rice gets out of the way faster yeah. um, than, than the corn or the rye or whatever else. And so really what you have is a... You know what you have right here? This is barrel gold, right? Rice here. and gravy. This, oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> if you're from South Louisiana, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so we all cook. All, all the people cook, and uh, rice is a big part of our our meal profile, if you will, and you put gravy on your rice. So that's why it, it just soaks up the barrel so fast, I think. And that mouthfeel for a four-year-old, yeah. that's crazy to have that yeah. that kind of viscosity on the mouthfeel. I mean, when it hits your tongue, it's not super sweet like, a, um, like an Angel's Envy or anything like that. But it has a good caramel sweetness. I mean, just tons of barrel notes at four years. But that mouthfeel is just nice and thick and heavy. Mm -hmm. And when I would expect at four years to be a little bit lighter and thinner, especially down at 90 proof. Yeah. Because, I mean, we got a lot of experience with a lot of four and five year old whiskeys that are knocked down to 90 proof and they're on the lighter, thinner side. Um, you know, some of us use the term, you know, the Bud Light of bourbon. Yeah. Um, but this is right. this is not that at all. This has a great mouthfeel. The nose is almost all just barrel notes. I mean, yeah. it's just yeah. all the that that heavy wood note that's just right there. A little bit of leathers and stuff, and usually you don't get the leathers until six and eight years mm -hmm. and and beyond yeah. with bourbon. Yeah. It's creme brulee. <laughs> no, it is. It's yeah, creme brulee. It is. Yeah. It's that creme brulee. It's yes. that thick, yeah. rich, creamy, with that sugar taste, that burnt sugar taste. Yeah. It's That's creme brulee. Exactly what it is. That's a great way to put it. That's that flavor. It's creme brulee. And so I know a lot of our folks, when they hear rice, they're going to immediately start yeah. kind of recoiling. Yeah. And all the all of a sudden they're going to think, That's oh, the biggest well, challenge. Right. Yeah. Is overcoming the, the misconceptions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's why Pat handed it to me blind. Yeah. 
Correct. It was brilliant for Pat. I yeah, mean, seriously, yeah. brilliant. Because um, immediately when I heard it, I think, I think, oh, it's Japanese. And then I start thinking Japanese whiskey, and I'm like, no, no, that's not even the right, right. topic. Because they're still yeah. doing yeah. corns, grains, corns, rice, malts, everything else. And then I think, okay, what else do I know that's rice? And I think sake. Oh, Lord. And that's even the wrong. <laughs> if you're even thinking sake with this, you're in the wrong category 100%. That's, a, um, that's our biggest challenge. You know, people go sake. No, no. Not, not, not even the same realm. Mm -hmm. um, we, I mean, I set out to make an American rice whiskey, an American, a whiskey out of rice in the American style, using yeast, you know, using it the way you would make a bourbon. Our, our barrel profile is a very heavy bourbon forward. I mean, it's a bourbon barrel. Right. Uh, made that, for bourbon. Right? Made for bourbon. Right. That, that's intentional. You know, I wanted a bold whiskey that would stand up. We, we have a camp culture in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. well, everybody goes to the camp. Right. The deer camp, the goose camp, whatever. And um, if you can't get this bottle to go with you, you, you you're not going to make it. There you, you go. Know? Yeah, you have to be able to sit go to the camp. Sit around the campfire you know? sipping on that. And yep. gonna, yeah, sit around the campfire. Um, you know, it, it's um, that's what they're going to do with it. So you have to be able to stand up to that. And uh, and this does. I mean, it's a bold whiskey. Absolutely, yeah. and it. I mean, it turned out better than we could have hoped. Really, <laughs> I, I'm shocked. I mean, yeah. really, because it's we are not. Too. <laughs> it's it's really not what I think of when I think yeah. of something that's four years old. I, right, I right. really don't. Um, a lot of a lot of four year old whiskeys, the young young bourbons and whatnot, typically have um, almost that fruit aspect, green apple, yeah. pear, yeah. something yeah. along those lines, until it really starts picking up more of those barrel notes, and the barrels start really kind of overcoming. But this doesn't have that. This tastes more to me like a six to eight year old bourbon than it does anything else. Yeah. It's got so much barrel character. There's no astringency to this at all. I mean, it is, it is just as, as nicely balanced as you could possibly imagine. I mean, the nose is just pure barrel nuts. Yeah. I know for sure, you know, that... Um this is a four-year-old, and as it gets older, five years is even better. So we hope that we're going to have a six or eight-year. But I don't know if we'll go much beyond that because it just it just draws it out. Right. Yeah. It just, well. Yeah. If if it's any if it's any stays in keeping with the with it overcoming the rice character, right. then it could probably get pretty over oaked much earlier, earlier if correct. it starts having this kind of quality now. And you know we're aging in South Louisiana, so, so you got you know, heat. we got heat units. You know. Nothing but heat units, so um, we uh, we're probably aging faster. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, we we get pretty good yield. You know, we're not right. losing too much. To well, the you guys got to be you got to got to be aging probably pretty close to what they're doing in Texas, like yeah. with Garrison yeah. Brothers. Yeah. That's how they're able to put out a, a four-year product that really punches. And and they, you know, in Texas, um, we're, I think we're fortunate in Louisiana because we have so much humidity. Right. They're they're hot. And just evaporates and out. they're dry. Yeah, you that's, know, so, you, I mean, that's you got to pour. Brutal. You got to yeah. pour it four to six years, or you got yeah. an empty barrel. Right. Yeah. Um, I can't believe that that is just a, a ninety proof small batch. That has the character and mouthfeel of of a barrel proof. Yeah, it's that it it's it that heavy. Yeah, it's. Um, I mean, frankly, it's, I didn't know much about whiskey before I started this. To believe believe it or not. I, <laughs> I was a, uh, that first just, moonshiner didn't just, either. Just a crawfish former, you know. Uh, but uh, I've tried a lot since then, and it, you know, I know I'm biased, but it's one of my favorite. God, it stands up. Favorite whiskeys. Yeah. Finish wise, you have just that kind of a little bit of alcohol prickle on the tongue, mm -hmm. just kind of hangs there. But then it's just nice barrel notes. Just mm -hmm. that that oakiness is just right there you've got a little bit of that caramel but that's mostly that sugar and that well i mean it's like i said it's it's creme brulee yeah hits immediately and then settles into more of those oaky uh, right. notes in the back absolutely yeah. love it <sighs> and that's nose up my wife i took her to um four gates christmas party a couple of years ago and first first time she'd ever been to like a real whiskey right. Right. bourbon place where yeah. everybody's hanging around drinking bourbon Right. She laughed so hard when she got back in the car. I'm like, what are you laughing at? She goes, I've never seen so many people with their noses stuck in glasses in my life. <laughs> and there was, there yeah. was like a hundred of us in the room and all of us are doing this. Yeah. But for me, that's the sign of a really great whiskey. Yeah. 
Because when you sit there and, yeah, I just love the nose on it, Um, you know, very fortunate. That's what drove me the whole way because in six months you you had sort of an idea of where you were headed. Um, And that that was the big encouragement all all along the way. Love it. Yeah. Love it. I, I was proud to do the review on it, and like I said, the um, you've got a fan base down there, and they picked up on that video in a big way. Yeah, um, sure did. I yeah. had more comments on that thing from them going, "You got you did JT Melly bubble, you got to try the bear purple bubble," <laughs> and, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, this shows there up in, is, in, yeah. in a box at my house, yeah, we, and I'm like, "We didn't send that." One no, you didn't. That was it. This was a barrel pick um, from Canadas. Canadas. Yeah, that's yep. down in Homa. So, um, so shout out to y'all. Get a nice up close. We'll cut it in. All that kind of good stuff. Um, this one's coming in at 120 proof. Um, so, uh, barrel number 42. Again, aged four years. I would give this one a pour out. If I'm pouring too, I'll yeah, let you. I'll pour a little bit. Yeah, do you go ahead and you pour. I, I don't want to go too heavy on you. I personally picked all the barrels, so they're all good, but some are a little bit better than others, and and this is a a memorable one, that's for sure. Again, no astringency on the nose. None. Mm -hmm. That is, you start getting into the barrel proof, especially when you get over 115, sometimes you get that, you dip your nose into it, and it just blows you off the glass. I mean, and there's nothing to that. Once you let that ethanol dissipate off of the first pour, then you can really get into it. Yeah, I mean, my nose is straight in. And I know everybody's like, oh, you need to have your mouth half open or whatever else. I'm, because they're like, it helps dissipate that. Yeah. You don't have to do that with this. You're straight into the glass with it. Just rich. Yeah. Spice. I mean, a lot of that baking spice, a little bit of light clove, cinnamon. But none Tremble. of that. Absolutely, I love it. <laughs> Creme brulee is still there. You have a little bit more alcohol heat yeah. on the mouth. Yeah. But these drink so similar, even at thirty proof points different. Yeah. You get the you definitely get the warmth on this one. It's still just kind of lingering in my mouth. Mm-hmm. But if you find a batch one, two, three, or one of these other batches out there, you're not going to be disappointed with 90 no. with this one. You're not. No, you're not. This one's great. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. All the same pro- flavor profiles, just amped up. You know how it works. Just that concentrate. But it still has that wonderful mouthfeel. Great nose. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about, you know, this is batch 123 mm-hmm. and and uh, every batch, it, it's almost like, a bar- I mean, our batches are so small, they're almost like a barrel pick right. in themselves. You know, each batch is uh, probably a maximum of 16 barrels, you know, some as small as eight, depending oh, wow. on, on the time of the year and what we're doing. Um, and if you, you know, we've got a guy that works for us and he's literally collected every single individual I don't know how many there are now, but uh, the I was trying to match every batch, if you right. will, and, and and I've learned that uh, the you know the the thing you want to do is sort of celebrate that slight difference. Absolutely, you know, especially in every batch. You know? When you when you're smaller, I mean, heaven hell, they you know they call it Elijah Craig's small batch. Yeah, they they got twenty five barrels, <laughs> 2,500 2, barrels going yeah. into a going yeah. into a batch. That's not a small yeah. batch. So these That's are, everything you had in the vat. Yeah, this is truly small batch, and uh, you know we're uh, we can't source. We're right. You know we're dirt to glass. I call it. Uh, we grow the rice. We we mill it. We distill it right there on site. Yes, we do everything right there in branch. Uh, and we had a lot of help and a lot of advice along the way. That's why we're back here in Kentucky now, meeting yep. up with some of those people again. And uh, but uh, you know, it, it's uh, no lip syncing going on here. <laughs> I, li- I like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because it's not like you can start up and, and call up, you know, a, a contract distiller and yeah, say, "Hey, you know. I want a hundred percent rice whiskey, uh, aged four years, da da da, in these barrels." Yeah. Um, I'm, I mean, you could get somebody to do that work for you, but you can't just call somebody up and buy the barrel. Yeah, it's not in their catalog. It's not in their catalog. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, we. I'm, I'm a. 
I say it often, I'm obsessively authentic, you know, and sometimes that's to my, uh, not, you know, obsessed with it too much, but uh, this is, you know, something we, we created right out of the dirt, you know, in Branch, Louisiana, I'm pretty, pretty excited about it, yeah. It's almost Absolutely. a miracle. <laughs> well, it, 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 it's crazy because we, when we think whiskey and bourbon, we think it has to be corn. It has to be yeah. either rye or wheat. Yeah. And that's all we think. So that even when you bring somebody and you say, hey, I got a rice whiskey, immediately they're thinking, okay, what is this animal? What, what, uh, what's going on here? You, you mentioned Pat earlier. My very first phone call to Pat Heiss, you know, six, seven years ago, however long, you know, he answers the phone. Oh. They they were still in construction. He I think he was on a bulldozer at the time. You know? <laughs> Sounds about right. And I tell him, you know, uh, rice, and he goes, "What?" I'm like, "Rice," and he's like, "Oh no, that's just gonna gum up everything I have." We can, <laughs> rice, no, no, and uh, you know, so that's where we started. <laughs> well, and and I mean, Pat is amazing. I mean, yeah. you talk about a Renaissance man. He he's yeah. Uh, there's not much he doesn't do. I mean, yeah, he's yeah. PhD. He's literally a, a, a professor at University of Kentucky. Yeah. Um, and and I mean, he teaches classes and yeah. makes still teaches classes. Still teaches classes, <laughs> right? And trust me, you first learn if you first for fun now. If you meet Pat outside of of the university setting first, you the last place you're expecting to find Pat is in yeah. a university setting. Yeah. And that's the last place. Yeah. Um, he's got a, my favorite line from Pat, because he's got that long goatee and people yeah. always say, oh, you're modeling after Pat. And I'm like, man, I could never carry that. Um, but he always says, um, inviting me into your distillery is like inviting a vampire in your house. And he says, <laughs> I just lean down in there and mash and just soak some up and then scrape it out in the car. <laughs> that's right. That's and, exactly what he does. But I mean, yeah. that's in, and he is just such a brilliant mind. So for him to be involved in helping you guys get straight yeah. um, is incredible. Now, the one thing that um, that really kind of blew my mind when I started researching what you guys are doing, kind of looking at, at your process and everything else, you've got a nine-day ferment on yeah. on your rice, yeah. which is three times longer. Well, almost three times longer, twice as long. It used depending. to be fourteen days when we first started. We, we, we're improving. Yeah, I, yeah, you cut your time down by half. Um, but you're talking like corn, wheat, rye um, with the with the malted barley typically has three to five day. Correct. So you're at a nine day. You're already doubled on firm time. Right. So I mean, obviously that limits your production as far as um, being able to to churn and burn. No, like it just that. It, it it doesn't limit your production, but it it makes you have to have more physical fermentation right. on site. Yeah. So you have more tanks. You just have to have more tanks more rolling on at the same time. Um, you know, I've just recently, in the last six months, sort of revisited trying to uh, move that forward, that timeline. But you have to also consider that what we're doing makes this mm -hmm. product. So you can't don't mess with it. You can't mess with it too much, you know. And uh, so cutting it from fourteen days to nine, how do, was that? Just the temperature that you were running at, or how? Oh, is it? I mean, it's. Uh, <laughs> Under different. It's, it's very technical, uh, you know. And I'm not a. I'm just a. Uh, I'm just a guy, you know. Right. I just, you know, I study things. Uh, I, I somebody interviewed Elon Musk. They asked him how did he build a rocket. You know, he right. uh, he said he read books and talked to people. That that's what I, I didn't build a rocket. By yeah. The way, but, no, no. This is. Know, but I did make a whiskey. And I, I enjoy this better than rockets, yeah. to be quite so, honest. <laughs> <laughs> I. Uh, you know, I read books and talked to people, and I talked to a lot of people, and probably uh, wear out that telephone number. You know, calling them and asking them questions. Uh, so we, little by little, we 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 gradually uh, improve that that cycle time. Um, and you know, how much faster we'll get, I, I don't know. But you know, if it takes nine days to be this, then days. we'll we'll just stay nine you days. Just, you yeah. just work your math yeah. to, to yeah. factor we for the nine days. Absolutely, more tanks. Tanks yep. are. Tanks are cheap relative to the end yeah. product, you know. Um, maybe not on a mass scale, you know, from a big, you know, multinational consumer. But that's, that's fine. Not what let, we are. let let them yeah. be what they are. Right. I mean, yeah. you're 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 after a certain product, not just to not just to produce a yeah. certain uh, alcohol ABV. Um, and and I tell you what, 
I'm really impressed with these. Well, thank I, you. I seriously, I am. appreciate that. And <clears throat> it's funny because the, the way I do, the way I share them with people is blind. Yeah. I don't even tell them what they start yeah. with. Yeah. Um, and that honestly is one of the best ways to approach these because it gets all your preconceptions out of the way. Yeah, right. Literally just from definitely them all. don't tell them it's rice. Yeah. Well, I mean, then <laughs> that's it. Because even even when not I not that I want to keep it a secret. Sure. You know, but uh, that you know that that uh, it's almost a what well, is a four letter sake. You know, that's the right. thing people think of, and, and it's not that it's it's not so, that profile at all. Not uh, not remotely made that way. Mm -hmm. You know the way. And uh, people say, oh, it's a Japanese whiskey. Well, you know, most, most Japanese whiskey is single malt. Right. You know, it's, a, it's a scotch. Right. right? So um, I guess some people, most people don't know that, you know. Um, and it's aged in a, in a, in a different barrel. It's right. a lighter whiskey. Mm -hmm. It's just a totally different profile. 100%. This is in a new barrel, new American white oak barrel. Uh, same barrel that a bourbon guy would use, right. you know, similar char, all that sort well, of stuff. Well, your process, if yeah. you put, if you did your exact same process right. and swapped three grain with 51% corn, you would be bourbon. I would be bourbon, yeah. Because fact, you, you're you using the exact same processes more or less, um, yeah. with, with just using 100%, and it's 100% rice. There's it no other right. additive there's, grains there's or whatever no else. 100% yeah. rice, distilled, uh, how, how high are you coming off the still? We come off the still um, between 120 and 130. Okay. Yeah. All right. So coming out, I mean, still well within range. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And you're you're barreling. How how high are you barreling? Uh, we're going like typical 120. 120. So yeah. a little bit higher on that upper yeah. end. Yeah. Um, but that probably has to do with more of, of your evaporative loss and everything else being in Louisiana and whatnot. But. Uh, <laughs> Well, remember, I read a lot of books, and I read a book somewhere that everybody barrels at 120, so that's where right. I barrel. <laughs> well, hey, that works. I mean, if it ain't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, what we're tending to see, um, and this is what um, WTD does, Wilderness Trail, is they go in the barrel at like 110. Yeah. Um, it allows for a lot more concentration of flavor, mm -hmm. and so when you, even when you're dropping down to 100 proof, when mm -hmm. it comes time to bottle, right. you're adding that much water rather than that much water. Right. But this... I mean, that's crazy to get yeah. that profile out of 90 proof. I mean, yeah. that's just bonkers. Yeah. Nobody gets that. Yeah. By the way, I, it, it's 96. Is it 96? You know, All right. I'm saying 90 the whole time. Absolutely. Like Absolutely. 96. Yeah. And, and here's the thing. I always do a, a nice edit down the bottom and call myself a moron or whatever <laughs> else. It's like, well, yeah. there was one time, I, well, I was talking about um, Kentucky Spirit. And, oh, yeah. and I had mentioned... Um, I don't even remember what it was, but there was some factor, or whatever else. It was completely off, because yeah. I was ta I was thinking that they went in the barrel at 125. They don't. Yeah. They go in at 107 to 115. Yeah. And flash across the hey. flat. I, I, I I'm, I'm, hey, I'm humble. I correct myself. Yeah. I'm like, hey, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, we. Uh, yeah. Again, I read that in a book somewhere, and uh, so there you go. Nothing wrong that, with that. that. That we didn't. Uh, there's no math to that. There's just. Uh, just getting a lot of good advice along the way. Um, we're talking about bourbon a little bit. We do have a bourbon, uh, by the way. We right. have a riced bourbon. So it's so a, corn, rice, barley? No, just corn and rice. Okay. Uh, and uh, it's it's just a test profile, if you will. You send it to we, me, I'll test it. Yeah, we're only, <laughs> <laughs> we're only gonna have a few barrels of that. And uh, you know, if it, if it turns out good, it's gonna go longer. Yeah, you know, it'll be a six-year-old before we release it, so we'll see what happens with that. And you know, we might start producing that. But nice. We'll see. We'll nice. see what happens. Mike, I love your product. Thank really you very good. much. You've been very accessible to us every time yeah. we've reached out. Yeah. Um, just been, it's been great. Uh, love your product, the the small batch and the single barrel. Um, I mean, it 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 opened my eyes to what to what rice whiskey could be. Yeah, um, and it really is is something that's surprising, especially from a you know bourbon and American whiskey fan. Yeah. And I think a lot of our folks would be surprised at just what's going on with these bottles, right. um, because there's so many misconceptions. Yeah. Um, and of course, we talk about it all the time when you're doing blinds, the best way to get past brand preconceptions is doing blind. Yeah. Now we actually use black Glen Cairns. So oh, really? it completely hides everything. Oh, wow. Um, so if we're looking to hide everything, we yeah. can do black gun Cairns and oh, do wow. it like almost like a triple blind. Yeah. And then you, it's all nose and palate. 
So you've got the 96 proof, <clears throat> um, right. small batch, and then you have your barrel picks, um, which are phenomenal. Do you have any other products that you guys uh, release? We do. We have our original flagship product, believe it or not. Okay. Not a whiskey. Okay. All right. All right. We'll, we'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll we'll, grab it. We'll, we'll try this out. Uh, so uh, every new distiller has a vodka. Mm-hmm. Uh, before, believe it or not, before I started making whiskey, I drank a lot of martinis. And uh, that's what I went after to start with. And, nice. Uh, if there are any vodka drinkers out there, it, this may be the best vodka you've ever had. Uh, I'm, I'm not exaggerating. The mouth, imagine the mouthfeel on the whiskey, mm -hmm. on the vodka. Very soft, creamy nice. on the palate. Uh, you know, a, a, not a dirty martini. Doesn't right. need to be dirty. Just it's clean. It's clean. Yeah, just clean. That comes in at 80 proof. 80 proof, right. So a little bit drop down, but nice, clean. Love it. Yeah. All right. We'll set it in here. Uh, and uh, so I'm, not a, I'm not a vodka guy because typically I just, I mean, my vodka martinis are not real. Any, any, yeah. I mean, any most martini. Peop, most people float a martini with, uh, you know, olive juice and it turns <laughs> that, green. Don't do that. That's do not do that. <laughs> not with yours, at least. <laughs> not with mine. Yeah, yeah that, it, that's it, exactly it, my it's, martini. It's, my, yeah. Mine's uh, vodka with with olive juice. You know that you know make it in the traditional style with fresh vermouth, right? Not six month old vermouth. Vermouth is a wine, so you you gotta you know you gotta do it right. But uh, anyway, I don't want to belabor that. But uh, no, we'll we'll have to have you on and teach us how to do actual real martinis because oh. I know how to make one cocktail. That's and it. it's bourbon in a Glen Karen glass. That's, that's my cocktail. <laughs> there you go. I, I do make a good smoked old fashioned though. I gotta, I gotta say that. So there that that I can there work with. But that's yeah. that's the extent of my cocktail making ability. Yeah. Um, you know, as far as people always, where is it at? Well, it's it's in Louisiana. Okay. Just about everywhere. Right. Um, it's in Arkansas, and we're just now going to Texas like this week. Okay. Um, it's the end of May and uh, first part of June, and I think it's gonna be available next week, only at Goody Goody, um, at least for now. And uh, it's also available online at Bourbon Outfitters in certain states. Okay, so good. Depends on where, you know, where you're located, but. Uh, yeah, start we're creeping there that, as fast as we can. Start creeping that distribution up. And, yeah. and those of you who are out there, I wanna again give a shout out to Arcadia Bourbon Society. Um, I know some guys down there would be more than happy to give some folks some hookups yeah. um, on some bottles because uh, that's where that came from. Because um, I was desperate. Because <clears throat> nobody around here carries it. I mean, right, I, right, I, right. They, they looked at me like I grew three heads when I walked into the yeah, store right. and asked for it. They too, man. Uh, and they're like, dude, what? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. Um, but but yeah, there's a whole bunch down there, and you have a serious following down there. Yeah, um, they yeah. were they are very proud of your stuff. Yeah, the guys um, from uh, Acadia Bourbon Society were the original barrel pick. By the way, I want to give that shout out to those guys. They, nice. They, they were, um, they yeah. They they got us off the launching pad. Awesome, so, yeah. awesome. I love it. And and I tell you, it's it's about nurturing those relationships with those folks. And they're um, not the only ones. Sure. Let I me. Mean, you know, it it becomes like you got so many people to name, but uh, yeah, uh, all the people that have done the barrel picks over the past year, um, you know, just numerous people that yeah. we we owe a lot of thanks to. You know, all the retailers. People like, at our distributors, everybody. So. Yeah, like I said, you got a fan base down there because they started. And not to mention. The people that work for us. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and, and family that that, a family that, that yeah. tolerated you coming yeah, in saying, so. I'm going to distill rice. Especially the people that tolerate me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that works. Yeah. Well, Mike, I really want to thank you for coming on the show today. I, I seriously thank you for hollering at me when you were coming yeah. into town. Thank you. Uh, so we could set this up and be able to do this because I know we've been planning on it for a while. I hate the, doing the Zoom videos and everything else. They just, right, don't, right. They just don't look good. Yeah, I yeah, mean, it's, it's like oh, everybody's tired of Zoom. Where's he at? It's like, they're, yeah, it's like, where, what's, what's he recording this on a potato? And yeah, it's just like, yeah. let's, let's do this thing right. And so when you were coming into town, it was I love real. your setup here, by the way. It's oh, beautiful. dude, yeah. let me tell you. Awesome. So, kid you not, kid you not. Yeah. Sunday night, that camera was in its bag in my car. Oh, really? And it was stolen out of my car. Oh, you gotta be kidding. I kid you not. And you got it back? I got it back. Really? I was stunned. So, it wasn't till like Tuesday that we even noticed it was gone. Really? Because I mean, I'm moving stuff in and around. I'm all yeah. over the place, whether I'm doing it for a shoot or whether it's in the car or whether right. it's in here. There's about four or five different places where it could be. So I don't think about it unless I'm going to use it. And then I was like, okay, 
So I've got this shoot coming up. Let's charge my batteries. Let's get going. <clears throat> Nowhere to be found. And I'm like, oh no, you've got to be kidding. And then we just started dialing in. We're like, it was in the car. It got stolen out of the car. That's Neighbors the video, their ring camera showed it. This guy walking across the little yards and everything else. 2 a.m. Sunday night. And so I'm like, well, long shot. Let's call the police, have them come out, file a report. And I kid you not, Cody, and I'm going to show his picture, um, um, was able to track it down. Um, really? So apparently all serial numbers anymore, okay. not like the old school pawn shop days. Yeah, yeah. Now all serial numbers of anything like that um, get logged into a system that is connected to the police database. Really? And so, okay. so they, um, they, so they were they yeah. can check it. So what it was is the guy who had it open, probably didn't realize what he had when he when he opened the bag. Right. Then when he did open it, realized he can't pawn it. Right. And I just whoever you are, I hate that you stole it. But seriously, thank you for not smashing the shit out of it. <laughs> <laughs> because I expect that if we're gonna find it, I might get the bag back. But the camera right. surely is just gonna like right, right. heave it into the ground. But Perfect condition, absolutely thrilled. So we've added a second camera. We've gotten our um, our lighting and everything. Uh, obviously, the um, this I love this natural bar top. We built yeah. it, we got this last year and it's worked beautiful. on this. Yeah. And then my brother helped me uh, do the bar yeah. do the bar back. Great. All the um, back lighting it really makes the oh, yeah. bottles pop. It really does. I love yeah. it. This is my little. This is this is my moment of zen. Yeah. So, <laughs> so if I, if I if I need some place away, it's just come down here and just yeah. sit on the couch awesome. and just kind of relax. But, well, Mike, um, I'll tell you what, we, um, I'm starting a tradition and starting with you, if you wouldn't mind. Huh? Um, it's nothing bad. I'm not going to make okay. a jump pool in the pool or anything like that. I know nothing that. about this. Yeah, so um, I've got a Sharpie right over behind you. Uh, um, and if you would, it should be like on that little bar, on that little table. Um, okay. If you would, um, oh, right on the barrel. Um, if you nice. would, sign our wall here in the corner. Here? Yep. Anywhere. I do. Like Meg? It's fine. Whatever how you want to do it. All right. Well, Mike, I want to thank you for coming oh, in today. Thank you. Seriously, thank you. You, yeah. um, you you popped the cherry on the wall. I guess that's probably not the right term, but um, you you. Do that again. I'm trying to think <laughs> what, what term could we use. Um, but yeah, you first one to sign on our on our epic wall. Of course, I'm going to have all the greats like the Russells. Yeah. And everybody yeah. else. But um, but yeah, thank you. I mean, and seriously, thank you and all the folks who work down at JT Mellon. Uh, for this awesome product you you've delivered to us because you yeah. made this bourbon drinker um, a rice whiskey drinker now yeah. um, thank you and uh, I think there was some That's other a big thing it, it yeah. really is yeah. just getting past those preconceptions because yeah. once you taste it yeah. once you taste it yeah as a bourbon lover yeah. you're not gonna be able to look the other way anymore right you right. will you will have to take it seriously if you're a real bourbon drinker not just a fanboy yeah um, because it is, it's everything you want in in a bourbon, right? And and it's it's young, it's affordable, it's local, right? And what more well, can you say? Local. What, what can you say? I mean, <laughs> you, you yeah, I mean, well, that local isn't localized, you know, yeah, not yeah. massive corporate right. owned, and all that yeah. other kind of good yeah, stuff. We're not worldwide. We're uh, if you're. If you ever go to Branch, Louisiana, you won't know you went through. Probably, yeah. <laughs> it, it would have had to show up on Google Maps in the number yeah. of times I end up through Branch, Louisiana. Yeah. Um, slim and none. Uh, yeah, it's usually one of the places where I'm where you're on, the, on your way to somewhere else, right? Right. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, Mike, I really do want to thank you for coming in. Thank, thank you for sharing with us. Thank you for uh, intro helping introduce our folks to your wonderful product. Uh, Happy to do it. Whiskey. My pleasure. Excellent. Excellent. I'm Jeremy James, the Bourbon Realtor. We'll see you all next time.